and record so the good people can hear Boobies. what it is what it is that we have to say mostly about mm. Utopia. This episode's all about Utopia. I'm kidding, it's not. This oh, is current thanks. gen episode 64. I'm Tim here with Derek and Dan. And I'm just going to jump right in right away to clarify. If you're watching this on YouTube, <laughs> I usually pick a different game or show that I'm into for the background. And I knew this one would get a response out of Dan and Derek because it's Metopia. And I was one of the first ones to laugh out loud when this game was revealed. And I'm still mad that their intern developer, <laughs> internal developer spent time making this game. Yeah. I am not going to spend money on this game, personally. Both okay. two of my kids have downloaded it, the, the demos, to their Switches. Oh, this it's, demo? 50, okay. it's it's fifty bucks for the full game, which I think is an insane price. Like, I don't know what's going on in this game that makes it worth fifty bucks to anybody. I mean, Costume Quest, I would argue, are much, from what I've seen at least, much better kind of kid RPGs, like very simple and kid friendly RPGs, and you can get those for like five bucks each on most platforms. I mean, that do you know what the difference is, Tim? What's One's made by Nintendo. Well, okay. And that's literally so, all. <laughs> and you at, can put your me in it. At at dinner, my daughter, who is, to, to her credit, she's eight. So she's the target audience for this kind of thing. Mm. It's a lighthearted, dumb-looking RPG game that keeps the mechanics very simple, from what I can tell, and it lets you create your own characters. She loves creating her friends and family that she knows to join her RPG party. And then, okay, and then he's going to be my thief because one time he stole my Pokemon card. It's like, I'm starting to see who this game is for. You know what I mean? Like, okay. I'm starting to understand sure. it a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, so that, that made sense. I um, maintain my complete lack of interest and honestly a little bit of anger towards Nintendo for putting any resources towards this project. Like, who pitched this and approved it? Hey, guys, hold off on Metroid Prime 4. Let's slow things down on Breath of the Wild 2. We need to get Metopia out the door, okay? This is the spring hit we've all been waiting for. You know Do what I, know I take this? Do we know, like, what studio, or is it just, no, like... It, it might not impact any of the other internal I'm developers. Sure it is, I, like, I like to pretend that it does and get mad about it. That's all I'm saying. Well, <laughs> well that's, like, gonna... 99% of gamers is they all think that it's just one studio that does one game, and if, if well, they're doing a different game, that means they're not doing that now game. Now, that can, though, right? It's... It can impact, but not. In, I don't think it impacted Nintendo. I think no. Nintendo... And then they'll probably this... have, like, Three nerds in the side corner making me whatever the heck that game is. They're like, yeah, we can get this done in like 24 hours, guys. Charge 50 bucks. I mean, on it seems like it's just listing it as developer Nintendo. Like, it's not specifying. So it's obviously I one of their internal teams. Internal teams, but it seems like it's like a... It's probably one of those things that a few people really thought would be fun and is targeting kids, and it's a good use of their existing tech for... Like... I would be surprised if this game took them a ton of effort. I don't think it was a huge lift. I mean, they just announced it this year and released it this year. So mm. I'm going to take this was... as um, us losing potential of Super Mario RPG because they're both RPGs. So I'm just going to equate this to we yeah, could have had a Super get Mario RPG. And, there you go. And I'm just going to be pissed off because yeah. we need. How have we not gotten the sequel? Agreed with Dan that like <laughs> if you're going to make like a kids. RPG and I again I get the draw of me because Tim nailed it. It isn't just his daughter, it's women and daughters and well sons too, like kids <laughs> um, sure. that like to just create bad. characters. And yes. so, you know, with a uh, with a Super Mario RPG, you can't do that. But with this, you can. But I I would say I really don't get why they've never made like a real. Like a real Mario RPG, not the bull crap they re release with those Paper Mario games. Like something real. Yeah, I would well, love a full Mario Super RPG. Mario. Get Gino and Mallow back yeah. in there. Yeah. I mean, that was Square Soft, which now Square no. Enix, obviously. Um, so, I mean, like, no. yeah, they just, they just need to get in a room with Square Enix and be like, listen, like, let's freaking make a sequel to this. Like, it's been Do a team up like years? they did with Ubisoft to make Mario plus Rabbit, which I stand by is a quality strategy game with Mario. It is. And it's and it's very kid friendly. And it's just got that Mario and Rabbit skin on it. But it's just an XCOM ripoff. XCOM Lite, basically. It's very kid friendly version of XCOM with Mario and Rabbit. That's all it is. So Mario RPG, they could team up with Square and create it doesn't have to be that different than what the rpg factory has been making like i am setsuna for example you know similar um it doesn't have to be similar visuals i'd like better I mean, visuals than that but like similar systems would be fine i, I am Setsuna I would, is a pretty straightforward 
combat system. I would you know? like the same. I would like sort of the same vibes of what they were going for, which was like it was almost like a playset, right? Like the, yeah. the sort of like style of like the way the game looked. Like it was sort of isometric at an angle. It was almost like you were like playing with like sort of this little toy playset. Um, I kind of would. I would want that still. But obviously, like for everything to look more modern like newer like the details like more details on and so forth but still keep that that spirit of the original yep. so i'm with you so yeah i put that background up because it is you know one of the more i guess you could call it notable oh. at least console releases uh, of this week but even with my two kids who i love and if they're interested in something i'll let them tell me about it i might even look over their shoulder if they want to show me something whoa <laughs> pardon me I just had to rip, rip a fart. Um, yeah, that's. It just stopped just a, raining, so I guess you're all offending the us around. left and right, Tim. You're farting in our ears. You're shoving Metopia down our throats. I mean, Jesus Christ! Man, that was loud. Hey, can we talk about They're, something interesting? I'm very all, the, all the motorcycles are out. But anyway, all that to say, I'm not. Oh, please, you fall asleep like in two seconds, no matter what, <laughs> unless you're talking. <laughs> um. Uh, anyway, what I was trying to get at was basically I, I put that up there because it's a marquee release, sort of. But my interest level has not grown in it, regardless of how much I love my kids. I am still spending most of my time playing Immortals, uh, Valheim. Uh, I actually did start another game of Resident Evil Village. I think I like it enough. I'm gonna. You guys know me. I don't replay games immediately, ever. Like Derek, mm -hmm. in all the years that we've been doing this show, we've talked about games. Maybe you don't keep track, but. Can you remember a time that I immediately replayed a game that I be? I don't think I do that. You do that, but I don't really do that usually. I don't think you've done it. So I'm already a single game. I'm interested in trying to unlock a few of the challenges in Village and just kind of experience it, feeling a little more OP and a little less anxious the whole time. You know what I mean? Have so, you started of, it, or are you just thinking about starting it? I started. I started my new game plus or whatever it's called. My how far are you into it? Barely started it. Just the very oh, opening. Okay. I got to the second house and then I just well, it's really just I haven't gamed. It has nothing to do with like oh, I won't play Resident Evil anymore. And I got all the way to the second house pretty quickly and then I was just like, I haven't played anything but Rocket League and Mass Effect Legendary Edition. That's really what took me away from Resident Evil. I would have beat it a second time by now, but yeah. But I mean, again, that is part of the experience, especially with these newer ones. It's 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 playing again, getting those points to unlock, you know, like cool extra guns and infinite ammo and trying to be like almost like speed running. It's it, it's like speed running for casual people that don't actually try to do legit speed runs like, oh, how fast can I get through this the second time or the third time? So on and so forth. So. And cool. I always found. I've already said this. One of the reasons why I like New Game Plus in a lot of games is because I like being OP. I don't mind the you know the normal experience when you go through it, but once I have everything figured out, I know how the systems work, and I've leveled up my characters. I like to do second, third, fourth playthroughs where I'm just like destroying everything. And so Resident Evil games, I absolutely love being able to destroy enemies like in one shot. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm looking forward to. So, I'll definitely. I don't know if I'll play it a ton because I do want to play some Mass Effect because uh, I have that downloaded. I want to see if the comp. But I just, Derek, you and I were texting about this a little bit this week. My my time to game has just been limited a lot. Um, we're getting yeah. close on a major project at work that I'm that I'm kind of heading up, and so it's just you know very stressful. You know, working a lot of evenings and things like that. And so when I do have time to game, for the most part, something like Immortals is kind of scratching that itch. If I just if I only have like 30 minutes to quick pop something on, go collect a few treasures or do a quest. So I'm actually almost to the end of the main game of Immortals. Uh, yeah. And I love okay. it. I love it. If, if that game had come out this year, it would be like right behind RE Village for my favorite game in 2021. Because right now, I RE Village is it, But I couldn't get into it because I felt like there. this is one game where I felt like there's too much stuff on the map that I don't even know where I'm going now. I don't know what I'm doing, and then I'll go to an area, and I'll be like, oh, you got to do a puzzle. And I'm like, well, you all know how I feel about puzzles. And I'm like, yes. nope, I'm done. So yeah. uh, overall, I love the world. Obviously, it looks like Zelda Breath of the Wild. I like the combat. But I could not get past the five-hour mark because I was just—I felt like 
I was overwhelmed, first of all, where I was going. And then once I think, I I think, I'm even saying think because I don't even know if I'm at the main quest. I finally journeyed all the way over to where I think is the main quest. And I'm like, oh, I have to do like this timed, not puzzle, but like challenge or something. Yeah, there's and all thinking, kinds no. of challenges, yeah. I'm like, Bye. Yeah, and some of them, which are very, very optional. By the way, I changed my background to... Super Mario Dude, I, I literally, my eyes just went right at that. I was like, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, there are some challenges. Thankfully, they're mostly optional. So if you look at the big map, if you're playing Immortals and you just want to do the main quest stuff, uh, maybe no. you want to upgrade a few things. You know, you can hit some of the vaults and things like that to maybe upgrade your health and stuff like that. But otherwise, if you're just trying to do the main quests, there are these big symbols on the map that'll have some sort of icon inside of it and that's usually I a think main that's quest. where i went where i have to do a challenge gotcha Our yeah sometimes challenges... they make you do they make you do one of the side quests essentially as the main quest and then they say hey there's a whole bunch more of these and then they you know okay start then that those. might be where i'm at i'm guessing yeah yeah i'm at the part where um i have freed the four main four gods and i'm onto the fifth area that's sort of separate from the main island mm -hmm. um but, I mean, I've really taken my time with it. Like I said, it's one of those games that I've used to unwind, and I'm not even worried about, am I progressing? I'm just kind of collecting stuff because I think it's fun. I think the combat's really fun. I think um, I would have gotten so into it more if the upgrading was better, too. Like, I didn't like the leveling up system. Yeah. I know they didn't want to make it Assassin's Creed Jr., but I kind of would have appreciated it if it was Assassin's Creed Jr. Yeah, there's so many things to collect um, it does kind of feel simple now that I've been doing it for a while. I think I'm at 45 hours total since it came out in December, and I've just been chipping away at it. Um, but anyway, uh, it feels pretty simple now, but at first there's all these crystals to collect and these plants to collect and certain things do certain kinds of upgrades, but once I just kind of let the game tell me what to do, but since it is kid-friendly, a thing will pop up as soon as you have enough resources to upgrade something. And it'll keep reminding you, like, hey, you've got enough to go upgrade your health. Go back and upgrade your health. So it'll it'll give you those prompts all the time. Um, and then outside of that, it definitely is very Assassin's Creed Jr., which is fine with me. I'm, I'm good with that. Um, I think they should have pushed the game a bit further away from Valhalla, though. Because it's yeah, just... Weird, right? It, it, they're both Ubisoft. They're both massive games. Like, just massive. Just so much to do. Like, to the point where Derek, like... I mean, Derek, you finished Valhalla, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you at least gave that a, a shot to, like, you know, complete it, which you did. And then, like, it's like you're just so exhausted from playing a game like that that, you know, then friggin... Um, why why am I forgetting the game, uh, name now all of a sudden? Immortals. Immortals, Immortals thank you. Yeah. Um, that it's like, I don't want to... I'm just exhausted. I'm exhausted from a huge 100-hour-plus Ubisoft game. So it's like, they, they, yeah. they should have spaced it out a bit more, I think, for sure. Yeah, I think it could have been a really cool like January or February release. I think they wanted to hit the holidays, and I, from what I can tell, it, it sold really well. I'd have to look back at the numbers, but from what I remember, okay. it did chart a few times, and I think it, it okay. pushed a lot of units for them. But, I wasn't um, sure yeah. if it did or not. To me, it would have been one of those great like early year gems well, that they had made. I'm wondering before. if it sold really well because they dropped it to a the sell price. price of like 30 bucks pretty fast. Yeah. Like... You consistently see that game at thirty bucks. It's literally thirty bucks right now. In fact, on Epic, you can get it for twenty bucks on PC because it's thirty plus you get your ten dollar coupon. So you can get yep. that game pretty cheap on all and platforms. And you can get that plus you know a season pass for the DLC for like fifty. And each of the DLC is yeah. usually fifteen each, so, which is what I got on the PS5. Well, that's probably why they're dropping the price because they already have what two like decent size uh dlcs so got three now so there was three, one called, so there you go uh, there, yeah there's there's a new god which expands phoenix's story then there's the uh eastern realms which is like a seven or seven to ten hour from what i've heard um essentially side story featuring you know eastern chinese mythology and then the what's the last one called is it the new gods or the old it's some kind of other god's name and now it's like a diablo light um mm. Oh yeah, you mentioned that. I thought that was weird that they changed literally like is yeah. it the perspective changes or like It's more of a perspective change. I did give it a little hmm. bit of a try cuz I I want to see if it's going to be worth my time when I'm done with the main game. It's pretty cool, but it, it the combat, the way it hits, the weapons, it's all very much like the main game. It's just perspectives now different. 
but interesting. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Um, so anyway, I'm really digging that game. It's, it's, you know, if we were to re-rank our games from last year, it would probably, I forget where it landed for me. I think it was just outside my top 10. It would definitely be up in that top 10 now. It would, it would bump a few, a few other games down. Um, yeah. but, uh, but anyway, um, let's talk about some other news headlines. There aren't a lot, but a few things that jumped out at, at me this week. I think Dan, you added a few to this, so I appreciate it. Um, I did see that there was a patch for The Last of Us Part 2 for the PS5. Did either of Actually, you re-download this and try it? Yeah, I literally just yeah. installed it yesterday. Um, okay. Just so I could kind of... It's uh, it's it. yesterday, not yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yesterday, kid. Pack the card, have it, yad. Yesterday. Yesterday. Let's go to the yesterday. bar. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Are you wicked smart? All right, um... Yeah, I, I'm so happy I never, like, picked up on that accent growing up. I'd punch myself in the face all the time. <laughs> um, sorry, what were we saying? <laughs> you were, <telling laughs> you were going to tell us about the PS5 uh, version. Oh, yeah. I So I flipped it to the 60 frames. Um, I didn't... It wasn't as distinct to me as when I first was playing um, Miles Morales Spider-Man on PS5. So, but I mean, if it is 60 frames and then, and then it is, it is what it is. It's not like it, you know, it's not like it's wrong, but for some reason, it's just when I, when I popped it in yesterday, I was like, oh, okay, this, this does feel smooth. Um, but it's just yeah. for some reason, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's just because of miles fluidity, the way he's moving and he, you know, he's Spider-Man he's web slinging around. So maybe like the movement obvious. just, yeah, more obvious, like yeah. smooth movement just kind of well, stuck out I to think me more. You gotta go back and play it then at thirty, because to me it's it's not just really noticeable. It actually changes how the game plays because okay. oh. the Last of Us games are very like weighty. Like the the uh, gunplay is very weighty, but when you mm. flip it to sixty, it's very it's very quick, very okay. quick. So um, yeah, I played it a little bit. I won't play another or i'm not planning on playing another playthrough right now i've already beat it twice because i'm still waiting for i want 4k with ray tracing mm -hmm. at 60. and faster load yeah. times because it still takes quite a while to load so yeah. it's still faster because like uh digital foundry did a whole thing on it and they were like so here's the benefits 60 feels super quick and i agree with them um and then they were like load times are actually halved so okay. oh, nice. if you play like the if you play it on your PS4 or whatever, it takes like a minute and a half to get into the game <laughs> on PS5. Even, you know, there it isn't going to be as fast as like Dan said it until they do like a straight up like PS5. Like we redid yeah. some stuff, um, but it, it halved it to 45 seconds. So Jeez. it's still yeah. nice. It's still, but yeah. it's still even th wait, but. even that seemed like because I literally I was sitting there I was like this is this is taking a while but like you're saying it's it's been cut in half so it's like I'm already spoiled yeah. I'm already like months into this gen being like yeah these games look like um village, I think that's from the main menu into Last of Us Part Two right the main yes. menu sure because but I mean a, when I played that game last summer and I could be misremembering I feel like I kept that the ps4 on suspend between every session and i didn't play anything else in sure. between it was just sure so i don't really remember the load times being a problem in that game i remember maybe once or twice well, having to wait the for last a while of us but... the last two have terrible initial load time but i mean right. like I, I think once you're in the game if it's suspended you don't really notice it but on the ps5 right don't be using that well, rest mode we Unless just like finished it. Resident Evil Village, and that game loads like nobody's business. It's just oh, you're man. you're in the game in like literally three seconds. So it's like yeah. I'm used to that now. Even just playing yeah. a handful of games, so going Same. to like even 45 seconds, which is half of the minute and a half apparently that it was on PS4. Like that's a substantial difference, you know? Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, uh, Derek, have you tried? You did try it out a little bit. Did you actually get to some gameplay, shooting some clickers and all that stuff, or did you just want to see it initially? Um, no, I'm still, because I'm in my third playthrough, I got to, well, yeah, I did gameplay, because I had, uh, I got to the part where Abby, in the beginning, is, like, running from zombies, and you can shoot them and fight them, uh, yeah. and then I got, I left off with where it cuts to uh, Ellie and Dina, Dina or whatever, 
like they're on their patrol because yeah. Abby sees like a uh, horse prints in, in the snow and she's like they're on patrol where where are they and then it cuts to them so i got to see a cut scene and oh. and play a little bit with them but like the gameplay the shooting that's where i noticed the most plus just push left to right on your right stick and you'll see the camera just moves with smoothness yeah that's, i'll have to flip it back thing. and forth for sure flip it back and forth because there there is more weight to 30 it's just slower moving left to right so that impacts yeah. you on your aiming yeah even just hearing you describe the story moments though that you got it too just kind of makes my stomach go oh yeah dude that game <laughs> that game oof Cer- certain story moments in uh 60 frames now so hooray yeah, <laughs> yeah. um all right well cool i'm glad i am glad that they gave it some sort of improvement if you're playing it on your ps5 but i'm with you derek yeah. i'd love to see a full resolution and uh and processing and load speed i'm with both of you on that one uh improve all of it and give us a you know whatever you call it the the definitive edition or maybe whenever they do it decide to release dlc or multiplayer whatever it is they decide to release you know bundle that together on the ps5 and you know call it the complete edition or something and a lot of people uh, buy that last of us part two intergrade there you go just like final (laughs) fantasy i mean they are supposed to do the 4k ray tracing um for free so i don't know what else they were I don't know why they wouldn't just wait. Like I, I would have just released it all at once, but I don't know. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, uh, I saw this one that you added, Dan, for Nintendo. Next Donkey Kong is getting developed by the Mario Odyssey team. Tell me about this. That's, yeah. That's kind of interesting. Just uh, me... FYI, I didn't add anything because I don't read your notes. Just, just yeah. want to make sure you knew that. Derek, I... you say that like we're surprised. <laughs> I mean, at this point, you know. Is I didn't even have a jokey things? response to that. I just, I know that's <laughs> true. I know that's a factual statement. So uh, last time you, you got your feelings hurt, you're like, wow, he just, <laughs> just crapped on me. He's in a bad mood. Well, before Dan joined our last podcast and then helped us relaunch it into what it is now, I had kind of just stopped doing a lot of shared notes and would just kind of text you like, yeah, we'll talk about this and this. You're like, all right. <laughs> well at least i said all right sometimes apparently i don't respond to you guys no no sometimes. well yeah yeah that's, that's anyway true. i want to hear about this because donkey kong 64 is for some reason people remember it fondly i remember it not being all that great i liked the concept but it was not that great of a game how as far as dare you timothy sorry it wasn't but i'd be very interested in them taking another stab at it especially if it's the odyssey team because i loved mario odyssey well Donkey Kong Country, the first one, was quite bare bones compared to the second and third one. I personally think the third one is the best. I, I think the majority of people that are fans of that series like the second one the most. Um, mm-hmm. I just really like what they added to the third one as far as like the traversing through the world and everything. I, I've mentioned that before. Um, so if they... I mean, if it's the Mario Odyssey team, it's like, well, are they going to go 3D? We don't actually know. This is a rumor. Um, And the site that I was actually pulling it off of had an update as well. Um, So I can just read this here. So development of the new... So this is a rumor. I think somebody had posted this on like Reddit or something. Uh, Development of the new Donkey Kong game purportedly uh, began around 2017 or 18 when Nintendo decided to bring Donkey Kong back internally for the first time since uh, Jungle Beat. Um, Let's see, it's been led to believe that this is a new epd team i don't know what that means that's not important um we just don't know if it's going to be 2d 2.5 3d there's no um there's no details on that yet Hmm. um so there's not there's not really a lot of a lot of details because it's it's really just like a person which has leaked stuff before um i love the dunk dunk country uh, games like the uh, frozen one that they came out with, and you know, I, I tropical like tropical freeze, games. yeah, tropical freeze, yep. But I don't necessarily want another one of those anytime soon. Like I feel like I'm good on those. I know this is gonna sound See, crazy because some people are like, "That you're insane." I'm sorry, but I just I don't think I want another side-scrolling platforming one. I'd be very interested though to see them take a brand new approach to Donkey Kong and try 3D or something, try something else. But, I would like both. I, I would like them to do. I would like them to do a third one of that, but then just like they did with the original trilogy, like open it up 
on that third one, open it up like they did with three back in the day. I, I would like them yeah. to do that. But then also, yeah, definitely take like a take a crack at it in the three D space because I mean, there's only one three D Donkey Kong game, and that's it, um, it doesn't have you know, to be N64. full open world three D. It doesn't have to sure. be that. It could be more along the lines of what we saw with Crash Four where mm. it was enclosed spaces and then it does sometimes shift to a pretty straightforward you know side scrolling but then it can kind of open up and then you can spin the camera and you know it's it's a little tougher to navigate you know like i, don't, I think something like that could be good for donkey kong country i mean donkey kong and <clears throat> they could just go straight up odyssey route where it's like this kind because. of wide sections with with some corridors a little bit i don't know i mean if you're playing a gorilla and there's some swinging around i feel like you do need a little bit of openness maybe yeah. Um, cause it'd be weird kind of just going down a hallway if you're a gorilla swinging on like trees or vines or something, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Yep. I'm with you. All right. Well, that's kind of um, interesting. We'll yeah. see if that is actually something that is talked about officially by Nintendo. If that's just one of those rumors that then kind of just slowly fades away and we don't hear anything else about it. We'll see. Hopefully we'll see it or something. Three, Tim. Or we won't see. I don't know. Um, but speaking of Nintendo, they did release a few more retro games on their service. The only one that I only care about one of them, and it's actually a sport I'm not even a fan of, which is interesting. But so anyway, <laughs> uh, they released a few SNES games: Caveman Ninja, Joe and Mac, Magical Drop Two, Spanky's Quest. There you go, Derek. Spanky's Quest. That's okay. basically just Derek's life. No. Yeah, and any an <laughs> NES game uh, called Ninja Jaja Maru Kun. Sure. Uh, I, I guess it was a. Japanese These all sound like classics, Tim. <laughs> I know. But the one that I did play on Super Nintendo, I rented it for a while and then ended up buying it, was Super Baseball Simulator. I, I always called it 1000, even though it's 1.000. Mm -hmm. um, but I did like that game a lot. It had a little bit more of a RPG elements to it because every it was set in the future. And everyone's robotic, and you have special abilities when you go up to bat or when you're pitching. And, and um, you can create characters and create teams. And so it was all very fictional version of baseball. But I liked it. Um, I'm yeah. sure if I were to replay it, all that nostalgia would fly out the window as I would realize it's not good. But um, I have fond memories of it, at least. I really liked that game. Sure. But anyway, well, remember like that, was early, that, was, that was early 90s. It could be because I went back and played yeah. those. I played some ROMs of those old you know, WWF games back when mm. it was called WWF. And I still think those are pretty fun. I still think yeah. the main mechanics are fun, even though it's very jittery and kind of ugly. The yeah. mechanics are still fun. Sometimes the nostalgia of something just holds it up enough where you're like, I, I enjoyed this. I could play this for an hour or two and I'm good. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. All right. If in the background you hear kids and or my wife, it's because she's doing kid bedtime alone. And so mm. don't judge her too harshly if you hear her scolding somebody. <laughs> um, but judge Derek because he's on his phone during our show. All right, so... Well, because we're talking about things were... he doesn't care about, right? <laughs> you said you <laughs> have a whole bunch of Final Fantasy stuff. Well, and I wouldn't curious. say a whole bunch, but... Well, it looks like a couple different things, at least. So, yeah. what do you got? Um, so, let me actually pull up the page. Um, so, uh, one of them I kind of just maybe wanted to have a general discussion, or maybe it's just a discussion between you and I, Tim, and Derek will... Sit there and listen intently. To lay down. <laughs> I do love that we can talk trash right to his face about this, and he <laughs> leans into it like he just lean. He's like, yeah, literally, he's leaning right now. He's leaning down on on a pillow. <laughs> um. So they had the Final Fantasy Fan Fest, which is Final Fantasy fourteen related specifically. Uh -huh. Um. And they just kind of gave the release date of um. Of the new expansion, Endwalker, which is November 23rd. So we have a release date for that. A um, couple of different editions. The one that's 140 bucks is already sold out, of course, obviously. Um, 140 bucks for an expansion. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, you know, that's, that's like, that's fine. That's not even Does that it come much with different. like a year of subscription or something? Like, that's I, a I lot of money. I don't actually know what it comes with. I saw the image. I saw like a book and some like, like, like little uh, art art cell, like, you know, kind of those like postcard looking things with art on it. Yeah, I don't know. Right. Um, I think there's some in-game items. One of them gives you like 30% extra EXP until you hit level 80, which actually is pretty nice because, you know, getting to level 80 can take a while. So, um, but yeah, so, you know, that's that's cool and all. But actually, the main thing I wanted to talk about, um, which I think is a big deal is uh, Yoshinori Katase has succeceded Shinji Hashimoto as a Final Fantasy brand manager. Um, right, so now, I know the name Hashimoto, of course, but who's Katase? Yes. 
What's he? What? What's he? Well, right Katase's now? been around for a long time. So Katase actually, um, I mean, co-director role of Chrono Trigger, uh, co-producer yes. in the first two Kingdom Hearts games. I mean, he's director of Final Fantasy six, seven, eight, ten. Um, oh, Katase, well, dude, he's, Katase he's been was responsible actually there. for most of the stuff that I love by Square. Then. Awesome. Yeah, he was. Um, he was uh, on the stage during the Final Fantasy uh, VII remake reveal when they were actually yeah. showing the gameplay. He was on that on the stage with that guy that was like translating or you know doing the the English kind of describing the game. Um, yeah, Katase has been around for a long time, so I think it's actually a big deal because Katase to me, since he comes from the development side. Um, having him kind of be the new brand manager, I think is a is um, is great. I think having somebody that's kind of been in the trenches making the games and he's been around for a while and has been part of making some of the best Final Fantasies, having having him spearhead that whole thing, I think is really cool yeah. and really important. Um, and it just, uh, yeah, I think it's just good news all around. Not that I had a specific um, opinion for Hashimoto. Or it, it uh, you know, about Hashimoto. But Hashimoto is the guy that came out during the, uh, I think it was 2013 PlayStation experience. The please be excited moment. I don't know if we all remember that. But the, the, oh, the I meme, remember I, that. The, the meme that I like to throw out there. Uh, oh, yeah. where, where, they, where they brought Agni's philosophy tech demo. That's what they brought to that show, which they actually had showed the year before. So they brought a year old tech demo to the PlayStation experience being like, yeah, this is what we have to show you guys. Please be excited. It's like, all right, you guys are ridiculous. Um, yeah, but Hashimoto has been around for a while, so he is still going to be at Square Enix. Um, but I think he's just going to be on like sort of the uh, board of directors kind of doing gotcha. some other decision making. So he's still sticking around. But yeah, no, I, I, I think it's great that Katase is going to be kind of like spearheading that. Uh, so the, you know. with brand management stuff, and call me crazy. I feel like this isn't going to impact most fans of the games, unless you're like a hardcore fan and you really follow who's in what position at that company and you, and it matters to you. Mm -hmm. How is this really going to affect <clears throat> most of us that just like to play the mainline final fantasies and, you know, I mean, so for me, like, I guess for me, and I'm not always just like looking at it from only the cynical perspective, but like Hashimoto to me, when I looked at him, like, and he came out and he was saying what he was saying, like, it just kind of came across from a very, like, I'm a suit perspective. I got gotcha. And with, yeah. with um, Katase, again, being from the development more of a gamer. side. Yeah, more of like, you know, being involved with the games and like, yeah, you know, maybe would come will come across more genuine when you know. So it's a, it's a public perception thing. It's like, all right, yeah. who's gonna come out and talk about our stuff? All right, that yes. totally makes sense. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So a better perception of when he's coming out, because he's gonna be the one coming out in these presentations when they're unveiling something, or you know, like he's gonna his please be excited moment will seem more genuine to me because yeah. of you know his background and his history with the series. So yeah, I got. I it. just thought that okay. you know that that was cool, a cool thing that happened, um, sort of passing the torch. Um, and that happened at the fan fest. So yeah, yeah, you know, just kind of a big deal, I think in general yeah. for the series. So yeah, especially when it comes to those kind of presentations and all that stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, are they yeah. going to be, at, they're going to be at E3, right? Did they announce they're specifically going to be attending to show stuff at E3? I don't know. I mean, they did their own presentation last year. So yeah, I wonder if I they'll have a, or maybe I they'll partner know. with, a few of the different I mean, other presentations. Because Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate is still exclusive to PlayStation for at least six months is like the new contract. Right. So like it seems like they're still very much connected to Sony. Um, and Sony and, is not officially going to be at E3 this year. Not right. Um, and, and by Final the way, Fantasy when I, I know when I say at E3 for everyone listening, I just mean like yeah. contributing to whatever the online presentations are. That's all I mean. Sure, that's sure. really all yeah. this is. Yeah. I mean, and, and Final Fantasy 16 was also announced during uh, the PlayStation 5 unveiling. So, yeah, yeah. there's still definitely very much a, 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 you know, a relationship there. So I feel like if Sony's doing anything this year and it's not like right connected to E3, um, if it's their own presentation, but let's say it's like a month later or something, yeah. I feel like Final Fantasy stuff would be there. But I could be wrong. I don't know. That's what EA is doing. EA is doing a July thing. <clears throat> which probably yeah. for their timing for like their biggest game of the year is is madden for at least for the u.s and i think worldwide it's probably fifa and those mm. those games i think usually come out back to back like august september i think 
So that makes sense for EA to do that. And for Sony, I think if they go any later than July, it's going to be the same thing as last year. Where they started to be a lot of outcry, like, where are, what are you doing? Like, fall's coming up. We don't know what you're making. So I, I have yeah. a feeling here from them in June. I'd be shocked if we don't. Uh, but I am um, got to be July, if not June. I just I don't want a repeat of last year where all these presentations were just all so spread out, like just all over the place. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that I, can, I remember it's kind of fun on one hand because you can give you can spotlight things that wouldn't normally get spotlighted. But it's also it just doesn't have that same magic feeling yeah. as E3. I know we does. discussed it last year. I mean, Derek, I know you definitely were very much, I think, on my side with like you just like everything just kind of being a huge blowout and just being like, boom, like here's all this stuff, like announcement, 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 just melt in your face. I like that, too. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that, too. By the way, yeah. I do get the feeling that if it, let's just say E3 goes even moderately well. Let's say it uh-huh. gets the viewership that they want and it makes the money they want via advertising or whatever it is they they have for their revenue plans. And it even goes moderately well. I think that's pretty much it. There might be some form of in-person thing for certain companies or certain partnerships, but I think it becomes an online event. I think E3, as we always watched it from distance, most of us, um, is, is no longer. But who knows? If it crashes and burns, then maybe next year they bring it back in person to try to revitalize Did, it. Um... Did the last the last thing that Keeley did? I forget what show it was for. Um, he had people on stage with him, right? Just maybe not standing next to him. For the but Game I, Awards. I, I, was it the Game Awards? I thought he had people there too, or was it all just them kind of skyping there, in? Now I'm blanking out. Yeah. For some reason, I'm picturing the year before that more, so I can't yeah. remember. Well, well I, if anything, I didn't watch the Game Awards this past year. Okay. Yeah. Well, I believe in Keeley. I think Keeley could still bring something together where people are actually involved and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how E3 stuff plays out. But I know I kind of interrupted your Final Fantasy train. Is there anything else yeah. or is that most of it? Okay. I mean, I could talk I, about Final I, Fantasy all day, too. I still <laughs> no. am very excited to oh, see God, what no. 16 ends up being in terms of, Dude. Yeah. you know, is 16 a full on action RPG where you're. Yeah. You're in sync control of a singular lead character. Is it more party based where you're giving out instructions I mean, a little bit? On like, I'm curious that, to see how it all comes together. If I'm basing it off of that trailer, I think it definitely seems very much like a single player, like just or a single character story driven yeah. um, action RPG. Because I mean, but wouldn't that be that'd be brand new for Final Fantasy, yeah, wouldn't it? Because it isn't every other every other yeah. non MMO. Uh, Final Fantasy entry has been party based. Yeah. Well, like, and the reason why I think that is because in the trailer, clearly the main character, I think it's Clive is his name, is absorbing the powers of the summons. Like he has this, he does that uppercut move that shows the Phoenix, like his arm looks like the Phoenix. And then, or maybe that was Titan. I forget, but he, he does like a move that looks like it's the Titan. So he has the power of Titan and then a different move where he has the uh, power of Phoenix. So clearly he's like absorbing essence or something. And to me that reads as like, well, he's the focus, and like he's the one absorbing the power. Unless there's like a couple other people that tag along, and maybe they can absorb power from a, from different summons that you know show up later in the game. Um, right. That could be, that could be a possibility, but I don't know. It just seems really to it was trying to fixate on Clive and kind of the abilities that he has. So. Now I would love that. I don't know what you you guys think about this. If you both care, maybe you don't really care what kind of game it is. You just want it to be good. I would love for Final Fantasy to go in the direction of a singular, you're just controlling one character and you have a set of moves and you can upgrade that one character. I think that'd be a really interesting way for them to experiment a little bit and also really hone in on that one character's upgrades and skill sets and all that. On the other hand, it might feel weird for a Final Fantasy mainline single player experience to not have some sort of party involved. So I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. What would you prefer? Either one of you. Would you prefer it to be prefer... give me one character or give me a party? Party. I'd prefer party. party. Yeah. I've always liked I, party I, games. <clears throat> I think if it's going to... I mean, for me, like... So I've I've grown to accept, like, what 7 Remake became. Like, obviously, at first, I was like, no, I, I do want it to be turn-based. And then, like, what it became, I'm like, it still basically kind of is turn-based, but it's, it's you are moving 
as if it's an action game. It's it's a really cool hybrid, I think. Um, so I'm fine with that and, and them experimenting. I'm I'm fine with 16 if it is just one character, but then 17 go back to a party uh, based yeah. experience. So you know, yeah. that's what Final Fantasy is. Each one is is different from the one before in some way, yeah, shape, so or it, form. It, so it could be one of those things where there's a party, but you really only worry about Clive or whoever. You know, yeah, you don't maybe maybe everyone else just kind of responds. AI. Yeah, people. I mean, knows? you yeah. usually set up. You usually set up like the AI tactics, like in um in twelve. In twelve with, yeah. with the maybe, gambit system. You know. Yeah, and by the way, the name Clive reminded me of one of the cooler optional characters you can get in Sweet Code Two. Uh, Clive, he's a an assassin. Yeah. Anyway, um, all right, that's enough Final Fantasy talk. Get out of here with all that stuff. Get out How of dare Let's Fantasy. talk. Uh, Scarlet. Scarlet Nexus. Yes, actually, yeah. I'm very curious. Please tell. Yeah, I'm I'm super curious because I've been kind of like this looks super cool and very anime, which I'm all about. But like, comes out in does... June, right? Was there some news about it or something? That was yeah, a demo. it comes out in June. The demo came out on the Xbox okay. on May 21st. So I downloaded it and I played it for about 45 minutes. I finished. All right, so there's two characters you can choose from. I think the demo's the exact same for both because I completed it with one. Then I immediately chose the other character and she was using the same dialogue as the guy running through the same area. So unless it like deviates, I'm guessing the game is the same no matter what character you choose okay. um, is kind of my point. But anyways, so this game is... Um, it it's an RPG like action RPG, but it's it, it is party based. Um, at least the hmm. part of the demo I'm playing, which I think is still kind of early on in the game. Um, you do have like you're kind of like part of the squad, like you're a new re- recruit and you're a part of the squad, and then you get assigned with a couple of other uh, people in the squad that you are going on this this task or journey with. Um, but combat wise, wow, is this game super freaking fun. And it's pretty really? chaotic. Like in the beginning of the demo, it's not that chaotic. They kind of introduce you to like a few um, enemies, you know, and they're just doing the tutorial. And even when you start, when you're past the tutorial, I'm kind of like, okay, well, they're not giving you that much. And then they start not overwhelming you, but they start throwing a lot of enemies at you and you really have to use everything that you learned in the tutorial. And there's a lot going on because each character has special abilities and you're kind of utilizing their special abilities while you fight. Um, Like one of them, I think he lights your sword on fire so you can do fire attacks. And then another one gives you the ability to uh teleport and so on which the levels as you're exploring the level you can't advance in some areas unless you teleport through uh, a a chain wall or whatever um so anyways the point is is i i already was interested in this game but then i think i saw kyle neely commenting that he'd heard outlets previewing the game and they weren't liking it so i was a little concerned going into the demo. Not again, y'all know how I feel about games media, but still I if I'm hearing it's not as good yeah. as it looked, I, I do get a little concerned. Like maybe they're because they're not always wrong. So I booted up the demo and I was completely blown away that I immediately hmm. went and pre-ordered the digital deluxe edition on PC. Like I was like, done deal. Like this is day one for me. Even if what the is story it, what is it, sucks, uh, compare to what would you compare it to as far as the feel gonna, of the combat? I was gonna ask if it's like near because it kind of has near vibes. It seems like to me, it's like it has like um, a Final Fantasy fifteen feel, and the mm-hmm. reason I say that is because you're utilizing your squad members' specials while you're flying around, beating the crap out of everything, and doing your specials. Um, and then it has like the ability to what is it telekinesis? So what was the game psyops? Where you used oh, to be so able to telekinesis? Telekinesis. Yeah. 
So yeah. PSYOPs used to be able to grab things and throw it at the enemy. That's a huge part of this game. So while I was playing, I was like, this is like a, this is like PSYOPs, which I absolutely love. So um, it's very chaotic. It's very well done. It's not so chaotic that you're like, I don't know what's going on. Where's my character? And I also noticed there's a couple, like, there's, like, a couple, like, mini bosses, I would say. They're the same ones. You run into them, like, two or three times. And then there's a boss boss at the end. The mini boss fight was nice. Um, and then even the boss fight. Um, that's where, to me, I saw a lot of the RPG elements that you can't just go in there and hack and slash. This is more than a hack and slash game. There's okay. definitely going to be some RPG uh, elements to it. There's a, a spoiler: the the final boss that you fight, his weakness is fire, which they tell you while you're fight, fighting him. So they're like, "Hey, use my special ability, you know, to light him on fire." So there, I can already tell that's what they're going to do with this game. Like they're they're not going to let you just swing your sword and play it like kind of like dmc because it like the combat fluid fluidness to the combat is kind of like dmc but it's not going to be dmc it's going to be an rpg that's definitely a pro because i mean devil may cry is awesome so what's the level structure like is it like devil may cry where it's kind of like areas that it's are like interconnected or okay it's like okay. devil may cry gotcha. there's it's not open world it's not even really that open area yeah there is little things you can deviate off of like you can go you can you know, go through a wall, so you got to pay attention to your surroundings and stuff like that um, to get like items, secret items, and and weapons. But um, in the demo, I had collected a weapon that was better than the one that I had when I started. So I was like, cool. Like, if you all know me, I love that. So like, yeah. anytime I can upgrade my character, make them more powerful. So uh, and especially if it's like remarkably more powerful i really hate upgrades that are so minute that it's like well i don't notice the difference i'm just glancing through some of the general reactions from most outlets and they're all very positive with this demo hmm. i feel like i had read something a few weeks back where someone was a little concerned about how this game might turn out but yeah the demo well, being out I it seems was like the Kyle Neely was the one that was commenting on that and saying somebody said that i don't know what yeah, there was some kind of negative like potential preview or i can't remember all the details but this is really promising like i'm pretty much every outlet is saying the demo is great and if you don't have an xbox don't worry about it it's coming to playstation the demo is out on playstation next week so you'll be able to give it a oh, shot okay. yeah next week um, um dude this is this is really through. promising so uh, tim and i don't care about demos like we yeah. might play them for huh. like 30 seconds but okay. i will tell you while you're your progression doesn't carry over. They even tell you that the the amount of stuff you do in the demo impacts the reward they give you when you buy the game. So you uh, do receive something uh, for I like that. Well, yeah. I do they like don't that. tell you what it is, so it could just be like, hey, we just I like give, you a- give it a little bonus. Yeah. It's probably just some sword that's like a little better than your starting up sword, but then like it's not good anymore in like an hour or two, but um, did you skip the cutscenes, Derek? <laughs> Listen, guys, I date a lot, which means <laughs> one of my one of my selling points when I'm dating is I tell the girls I'm a really good listener. Okay. So I don't want to listen to a couple of guys on a chat. I don't want to listen to yeah. TV shows. I don't want to listen to cutscenes because yeah. I'm already perfecting that skill I with just, girls you could have fooled way. me when huh? us two are talking i said you could have fooled me yeah. when the two of us are talking <laughs> yeah. dude i just pictured derek on a date and the the woman is talking and he's like frantically looking around the table for a skip button like how do i skip how do i skip this <laughs> she just so goes on like this I'm in this group on Facebook, and it's he a just starts saying group. it to her. Skip, skip. How do I skip? Yeah. <laughs> and the, one of the girls, she's really attractive. Actually, Tim knows who she was because I shared like some stuff about her because she's a Zelda fan. But she did a post where she's like, like, poke their forehead to skip to the part where you that you care about. <laughs> I was laughing. <laughs> I was like, that is so. She doesn't know. 
because this is before I knew she liked Zelda. I'm like, I'm a gaming nerd. I'm always like trying to skip everything. But she's like, poke their head to skip to the that, part I where I love that. Uh, there's a skit. Some I forget the name of the group that does. They do a whole bunch of sketches on Facebook and YouTube and stuff. But there's one where they skip ahead too far and they oh. keep saying skip, skip. Kind of has a, a Skyrim sudden, vibe, right? Yeah, it has like a you know like a live action like a cheaper live action version of Skyrim type of a setting, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then all of a sudden he's standing there and, and there's just dead bodies everywhere. And he's like, "Oh, yeah. I guess I skipped a little too much there." Yeah. <laughs> like, I love that kind of stuff. That's that's what we're talking about. Hey, listen, you've oh, got okay. me interested in Scarlet Nexus when, for some reason in my head, I had kind of written it off as yeah, maybe if it's super cheap and reviews are great. But it sounds like, demo wise at least, it is. Uh, this is a oh. smart move. This is one of those examples where it's a good move to put out a demo. To Jared show off, skipped all the mechanic. dialogue, but I hope that it at least has that typical anime cheese. Oh, know, it's just, definitely it's, anime. Well, I was yeah, yeah. I was reading some of the preview stuff, just skimming through it, and the developers are promising a rich story with really in depth characters. They all promise mm. that, but that's that's what they're saying. Yeah, but you know what? It had like a Code Vein vibe to it, and Code Vein mm. had a good story. Code yeah, Vein had more depth, not than great combat. Realized. Uh, I thought the comment was decent. Um, I mean, it's fine. It's but fine. you know how but, I feel about Souls. Yeah, it's, it was just kind of tired. It's a I'm little bit tired easier of, to play than yeah. than. Souls. I'm just tired of the formula of Souls. So when I played that, I was like, "Oh, Fair. this look looks like anime. That's awesome." But like, I kind of wish this played like Devil May Cry, and it it does not. So Derek just yeah. liked that game no. because the main girl in it was like that innocent, high pitched voice. That had no idea that she was revealing so much of her body to you while she was telling. She had no idea. Right. Like that's right. why he liked. Right. It. Yeah. No. Definitely. But Scarlet Nexus to me, again, just a demo. Combat wise, is one hundred percent the real deal, and I'm nice. really excited to play this nice. game. Yeah, yeah I was curious right. about that. Well, that is good to hear. I'm I'm gonna try out that demo myself because that sounds like it's... it seems like um, Bandai Namco is re- they've really figured this out because this game looks real promising. And then I've always enjoyed the Tales games, but I'm not in love with them. Right. And yeah. Tales of Arise looks mm. like it's figured out. Like, it hey, cool. we're, we're, this is the best Tales game you're yeah. ever gonna get. Like, it just gonna looks play. faster than like. I mean, Tails Combat has been generally somewhat fast. I mean, as the series has gone on, the thing that's bothered me with the Tails series is like just the way that they present the story is like they do yeah. those static images, the portraits of the characters, and like they don't animate them fully. Like if a character suddenly gets angry, then the like the static image looks angry. It's like yeah. I want actual cutscenes, and this one looks like it does. Like it's actually like gotcha. fully voiced like cutscene so like yeah it, it's a bit more modern it looks like they're trying to kind of keep up with the times so yep yep yeah all right well i've already talked about stuff i'm playing you heard what uh derek's playing i want to hear in a, in a few minutes and hear dan's thoughts on uh what he's been watching but i did want to share there's a show that i tried out on hbo max called the mayor of east town no it's just called mayor of east town not the mayor mm. it's called mayor of east town because her name is mayor um, the the lead character played by Kate Winslet. It's set in eastern Pennsylvania, and the reason that's interesting to me is because I've got a lot of family. So does my wife. So does my wife from that area, from the Philadelphia, Allentown, Wilkes-Barre, kind of that whole eastern side of the state there. And um, a few of those family members, especially on my dad's side of the family, have what's lovingly called a Delco accent. So when you say certain words, especially mm. with with O's. Or with A U G H sound, so like daughter, they'll say daughter, and, and but it's <laughs> it's it's just those words. It's not everything. Sure. It's just certain words, and I, I I can't really replicate it very well, so forgive me. But there there's certain words that they the O's and the A U G H just sound kind of weird. Kate Winslet, British actress, she's done mm. all kinds of accents over her career, Southern accents, American accents, all all the different gamut of British, Irish, Scottish. She's done all of it. And she said in an interview, this was the toughest one because there's no standard pattern to it. You can't say yeah. like, ha, you know, Pakika and Harvard Yard. You can't do that <laughs> with this accent because there's nothing. It's sure. not very consistent. And yeah. so anyway, I'm through three. It's only five episodes. It's kind of more of a mini series and a full season of a show. Um, if there's more episodes coming, I'm not aware of them. I just see five on there. Um, but uh, but yeah, through the first three that I've watched of the five, not only is the story really interesting, it's a murder mystery. And it's a small town. Everyone knows each other. And, you know, it's got kind of a darker vibe to it. But she absolutely crushes the accent. Like, she sounds just like my aunt. 
Like, just yeah. absolutely nails it. She's so a I'm great actress. Very, so. Dude, I'm very impressed that people can do that. And she is yeah. she is amazing in this. He's a very much like this kind of wet, middle-aged, weathered detective. And she's kind of been through it personally with her family stuff's happening. She's trying to be like the the rock for a lot of different uh, situations and at work too. So anyway, I like the show a lot. I do recommend it, but I'm also very impressed with uh, her ability yeah. to, to nail an accent like that. And generally when you do a, a, a show set in that kind of the part of the country, you don't worry about the accents. You just standard American accent is fine because it's not, no one thinks of Eastern PA accents unless you're from there or have family from there. Then you might kind yeah. of pick up on a few words. Um, it's not like, nor it's not like being from Boston and the, the heart of the city or whatever, and it's really clear. Or New York, or or being from yeah. the deep south. It's not I like mean, that. It's, it's very subtle. I mean, even Rhode Island, there are people. There's there is a Rhode Island accent. So I I think it's like a New England thing in general. I think there's definitely just certain pockets, maybe less less like like you said in PA. It's there's yeah. just not so much all over the state, well, but. It's not all over the state. It's definitely PA, right. and it kind of goes down into Delaware and even some sure. parts of – like in Maryland, you know, part, you know, Baltimore area. Some Baltimore folks mm. kind of sound like PA folks to me because I used to live in Maryland for a few years. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but anyway, I recommend the show. I am liking it, and, uh, and, and if you've got – if you're like me and you signed up for HBO Max to watch – I forget which movie I wanted to watch. Oh, I think it was – Wonder um, Woman? Wonder, Wonder Woman, and then I stuck with it for Justice League and stuck with it for God – Godzilla and, and King, Kong. King Kong. Yep. And, Which uh, I saw. And there's another one coming out that I'm excited to see in the near future. So anyway, I've found myself hooked on a bunch of their shows as well. I talked about it last yeah. week. I rewatched the Pacific. And hey, we got to give a shout out to Kyle who joined the show last week. He was right. I am happy with the way the Pacific wrapped up. And mm. my criticism of them focusing too much on one character, thankfully, was fixed by the next episode. So yeah, like the first four episodes... They introduce three main characters, really. It kind of tracks three main characters, and they really focus in on one of them way too much, in my opinion. Thankfully, the rest of the show, it gives the other two guys time to shine, and it's it's quite good. It's, Dude, I think if I were in World War II, I would have been the European theater if I got to pick. I know they didn't get to pick, but that Pacific right. theater looked like a nightmare. It just looked way, way I mean, worse. All of it's a nightmare. <laughs> All of it is. <laughs> like just I know, being a soldier about, in actual if I had war. To pick a, if I had to pick this setting, I would pick the European setting if I had mm -hmm. to. You know what I mean? Because um, that dude being in that tropical weather with the crazy rain, so much mud, also having to, so many boat rides and you never know if your boat's going to get hit by a U-boat um, mm -hmm. or whatever. I, I guess U-boats weren't really there because it's uh, the Pacific, but you never know if you're going to get taken down. Sure. Um, usually it was going to be by airplanes, I guess, with the Japanese, uh, oh, wow. armies, but dude, great show though. Pacific was quite a good series. I, I do recommend it. Um, good, good. But Dan, you've been watching something. You just wrapped something up finally. A different kind of war, Tim. Eh? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars. Yeah. Get oh, it? Boy. Get I do. It? <laughs> I didn't want you to say it cause I already got it, but go ahead. Uh, yeah. So I, <laughs> So while Tim and I were playing Valheim yesterday, you know, a oh, very man. excellent game that apparently none of you freaking dorks in our group can appreciate, and you all talk garbage, and I don't understand why. I can't stand all of you. Um, just kidding. I love you. Which, um, by the way, before you get the show you're watching, it was Dan and I have been spending all this time, although, although we, we took a break from the game for a little while there, but we spent a bunch of time building up this, like, mountain castle fortress, and it's got this big uh, tower <laughs> and stuff. And yep, so yep, we yep. activated the fourth boss of the game. Third? Uh, who, oh, no, fourth. Yeah, four, fourth. I think it's the fourth. Yeah, and, yeah, fourth. Um, and this boss does both flying attacks as well as landing on the ground and doing attacks. And thankfully, didn't wipe out our entire fort, but totally mm. took out the main tower. Like, wasn't <laughs> even... It was, it was bad. Yeah. Just I was like, it. Tim, let's and go it, in this watchtower. Like, that's going to help. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't... I guess we didn't think through the logistics of building our base right beside the boss spawn, but whatever. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, we totally slayed fine. that. We slayed that broad. She we went definitely. Down. Yep. Yep. Um, but anyway, go but ahead. Yeah. What, what are you watching? Mandalorian. I finished. Uh, so I had started it a while ago and then, you know, as usual, something distracts me, a new game comes out. So then I'm like, then I stop watching the show. Um, I was about, I think five episodes in. Cause then I picked up, I picked up, back on episode six of season one um and then quickly 
got into season two and finished that before, you know, I finished it Friday. Okay. Um, so yesterday. Um, yeah, like I was saying, uh, like I was saying to you, I, season two, I think definitely front to back is a stronger season than the first one. Um, I mean, for many reasons, I mean, his relationship with, you know, well, I mean, how much do you want to really say? Cause I mean, like he has a name. Some people might not know the name. I mean, I, I'm I all guess, about talking about all right, spoilers, mild, but... mild, mild spoiler warnings. If you mild don't want to find out any details of the Mandalorian show. Then you Star Wars off. nerds. So this is don't want this to is the anything. last topic we're covering anyway, so you can shut the show off if you don't want to hear anything about Mandalorian. But so go ahead. So yeah, his relationship uh, with Grogu, who is Baby Grogu. Yoda. Yes, Baby mm-hmm. Yoda, the kid, as he calls him, uh, throughout the show. Um, yeah, it just you know it it ex- it just grows throughout the whole show. So like at first it's like he he meets him, and like immediately he's attached. But like I just didn't really kind of get why just there was that immediate attachment. But as you go through the show and you get a bit more history about Mando um, and then just kind of uh, Grogu's situation, like his a little bit of his past, too, you you yeah. get why. And, and it their relationship just definitely kind of 100%. seems legitimate. So, yeah, yeah he was he, a little boy who was saved by this soldier who could have let him be or killed him. And he's mm-hmm. in the same position where he sees this essentially what he sees as a baby. Um, right. Who's actually 50 uh, years old, apparently. Who's actually 50 years old, but still obviously <laughs> looks and acts very much like a like a kid. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I, I liked that as well. I also think uh, season two did a good job of making you feel more like this is an epic Star Wars tale. Yes. Whereas season, yeah, yeah, yeah. season one, and I think I say this lovingly, it gave me much more Firefly vibes. It was like mm-hmm. off in, the, in its own little corner of the universe with very yeah. light ties back to the main Star Wars this one felt much more tied in and now with all the stuff with, you know, Clone yeah. Wars and Bad Batch and it just feels like it's much more part of this connected universe. And right. And I, I liked that what the way that they did it. Season one, let's focus in on him as a character and his relationship with this baby Yoda, who we don't even give you the name of in season one. I kinda right. liked that because then in season two they were able to expand you know, yeah. that world a bit. So did and you I overall think, like it or did you, uh, is yeah, this something I, like I want season three or what are you thinking with this one? I think if they keep on this trajectory, cause like the first five episodes, I think I was like, I, I like aspects about this, but like, I need something to latch onto. Like, I, like I've said before for me personally with star Wars, like I, I, I would say I'm more of a casual fan for sure. Um, I just, I, for me, I like the main conflict of the Jedis versus the Sith. Like I like kind of like the, the big moments. I, 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 those are what interests me more. Whereas some people like the side stuff, like they, like people have been obsessed with Boba Fett for, I mean, freaking 30, 40 years. And it's like, he was in those movies all together for what, like not even 10 minutes technically, but like people just became infatuated with this characters. Cause that's just what that series is people like latch onto these certain characters because they like the way they look or just certain things so yep. um but yeah so for me it's it's very much like you know give me a jedi give me a sith and in in the show there's definitely you know as you get into sec uh the second season there is a bit more of that connection with you know that kind of aspect of of the lore and and the overall you know world yep. Um, and I appreciated that because then it was going in that in that direction. I was like, oh, OK, this is really cool. They're introducing, you know, certain people. And I'm like, oh, this is this, which, you know, is tied to other properties that have come out like Clone Wars and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, again, my have- spoiler warnings here, but they did have uh, Boba heavily featured in season two. Mm. Uh, it's real. I mean, at this point, if you're online, if you're listening to a podcast, then you're online. You're probably on social media somewhere. There's no way you haven't seen some meme yeah. or picture or reference to Boba Fett being alive and in the Mandalorian. And, so I'm sorry if that's to, a revelation to you. <laughs> and I, well, I had to look up after the fact because I was trying to, I was trying to figure out the the where it took place timeline wise. Because in my yeah. head, for some reason, I was like, so at the end of season two, I'm not going to say specifically, but something happens and and where that certain person shows up i'm like this doesn't make sense because what happened in return of the jedi with boba fett i'm like that doesn't seem to be lining up for me i this doesn't make sense i thought this took place before episode i guess would it be three right um new hope no this uh, no but i'm saying i'm saying i thought it was before episode four i'm sorry 
Um, yeah, no, this, I thought it this was is before supposed to be that, happening but between the original trilogy and, and the and then yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I did not know. And then when I looked up, I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And obviously okay. it's gotta be several years after Jedi because the return of the Jedi, because the character who shows up at the in the finale in the big kind of climactic moment, mm-hmm. that character hasn't aged much from episode six. Right. And yet I Boba think it's... Fett has aged like 30 years. And I think they try to scar him up and stuff. But, dude, when he gets his armor back and is going full <laughs> dad bod in, in the armor, I was just like, yes, <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, um, I think I was know, reading... it's one of those things where the, the fan the nod to fans and kind of like that moment for them because yeah. he's the voice of all the clones, obviously. And right. Yeah, because yeah, he's yeah. so prominent in all star Wars content right now. Mm-hmm. I think it, it was one of those things where no one cares if he is probably 20, 30 years older than he should be based on the timeline. Yeah. It's like, who cares? It's just cool that he's in it. Right. So, yeah, well, like when there's that moment where it does show him with like the hood, like I I remember because I mean I haven't watched the prequels in like since they came out, but like I remember that actor, so I was like, oh shoot, that's 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 that dude. And then I was trying to piece together. I was like, all right, the clones, and so like yeah, the the son because it's not yeah. Boba is not literally the son of Django, right? He's he's technically he's a, a clone, clone. but. Yeah, yeah, so like there's that whole clone thing. So I was like, that does make sense that he would look like him because, well, he's a clone. So, yeah, you know? so he's, and I probably that... like, he's probably like 10, 10 maybe in episode two, which means he would have been a teenager. So, I mean, he's probably a good 15 years older than Luke I think... and Leia would be. So I guess he's I... not that. It's not that much. It's not that far well, off. What I was reading said, I think, nine years. Nine it's, years it's difference? nine years ahead, I think. Oh, it's I nine years after off. episode six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but, yeah, I just thought that that was cool that they're actually using yeah. that actor being like, yeah, well, he's a clone. So clearly he would look like him and this actor is alive. So, yeah, he's just Boba Fett now. So, yeah, yeah, I thought that I'm was sure cool. there are. I'm sure there are some folks out there who are like, no, the, the math makes sense and he should look as old as he looks. Whatever. That's fine. I It doesn't really matter to me that he looked older, regardless of if it's super accurate or not. Right. I, I loved what they did with his character I mean, and with they bring a, bring back another character from season one who you think is dead. But him and this character are now teamed up, which was a cool moment. And so, like, yeah. I really liked it. I actually, listen, I know you and I, Dan, have talked a lot about how much we love Bill Burr. And we probably are, we probably annoy people oh, with that too. Dude. But yes. <laughs> I loved his episode. And I liked yeah. the way that he played off of Mando's character. Like, yeah. this is going to this is gonna sound like a fanboy, because I am a Bill Burr fanboy. I, I am. I'll admit it. Yeah, I like all too. his comedy, and I like his podcast. I actually think that dude's a good actor. So in King of Staten Island, I thought mm-hmm. is that what it's called? King of, Staten, King of yeah. Staten Island? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was actually quite good in that role. Yeah. Like he did a good job acting. Like not being funny, not he wasn't trying to like be Bill Burr. He was actually a good actor. And I thought in this Mandalorian uh ep- I think he was in one or two episodes one episode. He was uh, in two episodes. I, one in season one, one in season two. Okay. I like I think a season two episode, he yeah. was really good. And I love the way that like there's a moment, there's a really tense moment where they're sitting there with an officer who he has history yep. with, mm-hmm. and this officer's not aware of that history. And I was like, dude, he's actually acting out and showing us non-verbally building yeah. anger. Like you could see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, yeah. I, I thought it was great, man. I thought yeah. it was great. Well, Bill just, you know, he's just latching onto that history of his, how he says he's just a screwed up man with his screwed up childhood. So he's probably yeah. just thinking back to that. Yeah. Um, but you know yeah, we no, won't he... talk about Gina Carano because she is persona non grata. Um, we can't talk about her. She is. You know, uh... honestly though, a true shame. It is a shame though because from the first season into the second season, there is a there's a growth there. And this is her first acting gig, right? Or was her first acting gig? No, no, no. She's been in movies. She's been oh, okay. a side okay. character in a few, and she's also been. I think she's been cast on a lead role in a couple action flicks here and okay. there. Okay. Well, I mean, I I saw a growth there, like the the way much like Bill Burr, even though he was only in two episodes and she's like in like four or five, I think um, she definitely like does a better job. Not that she did a poor job in the first season, but like in the second season, you can tell there's a difference there. She's more she's more comfortable being that character. Yeah. And I think yeah, yeah. a spinoff show or even just having her continue as that character in other shows would have been fine. We've talked about this yeah. before. Punishing her yeah. the way they did was just stupid. It just was dumb. Yeah, um, but, but I mean, that's whatever. what we do nowadays. So that's what we do. And I know people are like, well, oh, whatever. She's got another movie deal. And I'm like, yeah, but it's with 
It's with uh, Ben Shapiro's company, and they're doing some kind of movie. I'm like, oh, yeah, that'll probably be a great movie. It's going to be just as good as the Star Wars show, probably. Yeah, Whatever. obvious. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Derek, uh, well, what cool. is your opinion on Star Wars? Because you said nothing. And, and I mean, I know you've played, like, Fallen Order, and we bust Tim's chops about how that's the best Dragon I, Age you game. You watched though. Mandalorian, too, right, Derek? I think you watched it. Yeah, I finished it. Okay. I just didn't know if you're, like like me, kind of a casual fan of Star Wars, or if you like it a little more, or... Uh, I would, I guess I would fall in the category of casual compared to, you know, your, I would even say Tim, Kyle, Yeah. you know, my brother is a freaking Star Wars nerd, like he buys all the collectibles and stuff like that, but, um, I just, I enjoy all the movies, I don't read their books, because I don't read, um, (laughs) I'll watch some of the you shows. The I try to watch like the cartoon ones, but I think it's mm. just because they're cartoons. I'm like, no. Uh, yeah. So I like them. I really enjoy the video games. Like I like Knights of the Old Republic a lot, but that's more yeah. probably Bioware than Star Wars mm. because yeah. I prefer, I actually prefer the Mass Effect lore more than Star Wars. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely. I wouldn't call myself a hardcore Star Wars fan because I would lose a lot of different trivia contests. You know what I mean? Like I don't know it that well. <laughs> well, I mean, and, yeah. F- I mean, again, how many years of of lore and you know characters and story? And they put out so many books over the years. Um, right. You know, most of which now Disney declared not canon when they took over. But um, I I only read one of them, and it was a collection of short stories about bounty hunters, and that included yeah. like this author's idea of how Django Fett or not uh, Boba Fett could have survived falling in the pit. And this was like back in the early was it the, e, the EU books. Was it the EU have, something or it might've been, it might've been. Yeah. Um, but anyway, all that to say, I haven't read all the books. I can't make it through much of the clone wars. And I want to, because I know the clone wars has some cool story arcs, but dude, it's so many episodes. It's yeah. so many episodes, and a lot of them are really cartoony fluff. And normally, I yeah, would yeah, yeah. I would bust Derek's balls for being like, "Dude, you just are a hater." He's right. Like you start watching it, and it feels very much like a Saturday morning old school cartoon. And if you don't sure. already love it, it's hard to get into it. So I've yeah. always had trouble getting into the Clone Wars because there's a ton of fluff. And I've I've talked about this before. I I want to get a really good guide that just says. Here are each season and each episode number that you need to watch in order to get a good experience yeah. and you can skip all the fluff and you'll be able to like, track with the main story. Because like Darth Maul is a super cool character, like one of the only and, redeeming things from the tr- uh, yep. from the prequels. And he and, uh, pops and up. And Ahsoka as well story. has a great story arc throughout yeah. multiple uh, of, the, of the cartoon series. But it's like at the beginning, she's a pretty annoying character uh, right out of the gate. Just the, again, they do it very Saturday morning cartoon style, and it's just yeah. hard for me as an adult watching alone to get into. And I even watched right. an episode or two with my kids, and they're like, "Yeah, this is okay," but they'd rather do other stuff, watch other stuff. Sure, but sure, sure. Anyway, oh, one last thing before we close, I do recommend this movie if you guys haven't seen it yet. I think it came out last year. Speaking of kids' movies, we just watched the sequel to The Crudes called uh, A New Age. The Crudes, A New Age. Oh, dude those okay. movies are hilarious like they're are wacky they? and they're crazy but they are so funny so if you're in like mm. that really goofy slapstick kind of a mood and you don't mind a cartoon it's high quality animation like it looks really good but it is so funny like really clever um is this the second or third one it's the second one okay it's i can't they, remember they were, i they thought they turned it into a show the, there there is a show of it too but there's two oh, main okay. movies okay um they made I really like called the first movie. Yeah, it's it's very much in the same vein, right? Where it's very creative and funny. Like they they go full comedy as opposed to trying hmm. to tell. Where some... is it at? Where did you watch it on? We rented it off of Amazon for like four okay, bucks. Okay, so it's not it's not on any service where we can just watch no, it. No, the first one's on Netflix, and the show I think is on Netflix. I'd be surprised if the second one doesn't eventually hit netflix see i wonder why like you're saying it does legit like it sounds like it le- is legitimately a good one it's not pixar yeah. obviously it's uh what is it dreamworks it's, i think it's dreamworks yeah yeah it's like DreamWorks? it just seems like so many dreamwork ones just don't land they're just not as popular as what pixar and like disney's you know 3d sort of animation studio does like it's it's kind of weird i don't know it looks like it got really good reviews overall yeah um definitely um 
like on Rotten Tomatoes, seventy-seven percent. So that's that's really good. Mm. Um, is it DreamWorks? Yeah, it's DreamWorks. Yeah, DreamWorks. I yeah. think they I think they do land. It's just a different audience. Is that coming yeah. to Peacock? Is that what that says? Let me see. It might be on Peacock. I know it's available in theaters if you still have theaters near you. My wife mm. took one of our kids to see it recently. Um. Yeah, it looks yeah. like it's just to buy rent watch. It, but to it buy just seems rent. like it just seems like DreamWorks does pump out a decent amount of these movies and like I'll just suddenly see it on like Netflix or like one of these streaming services. I was like, oh, I, I and even though they had come out with another one, it just you know it just seems like they don't get as much traction or attention as you know what the other what some, the other guys. Some of them do. don't because they've had some a bunch of swings and misses like they did yeah. uh Turbo Sure. Um, Shark Tale back in the day. Um, their Don't their big hits one. were like, their big hits were Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, Madagascar, Dude. and Dude. How to Train Your Dragon. Those were all really how good. to How to Train Your Dragon and uh, more so, but Kung Fu Panda also really fun. How to Train really Your good. Dragon is like legitimately like it, it. The second one, like towards the end, uh, gets pretty dark. Dude, they're like all the, three of them are really well made movies. Really yeah. good movies. Uh, but they've yeah. got a, they've had a bunch of misses too, like Home. Uh, I mm. guess Boss Baby took off. Um, so anyway, yeah, oh, yeah, you're right. They don't they don't quite hit like Disney does, but they do. According to the money I'm seeing here on this Wikipedia page, they make a good amount of money on each of these. Ah, okay. Well, um, good. You know, good for them. I want them to them. succeed. All right. Well, I that want does that it multi million dollar company to succeed. <laughs> that does it for us for this week. Um, Thank you, Derek, for getting me excited about Scarlet Nexus. Thank you, Dan, for putting both of us to sleep about Final Fantasy. Am I right? Um, <laughs> uh, but next week, uh, the plan is to be talking about some Biomutant as well as previewing the games of summer. So that's our plan for next week. Thank you all for listening. We'll see you then.